What's up, YouTube? Pastor Bob. Well, I got my cart in the shop today. I got hammered on when uh, family came out to visit, so got to go through the carburetor, change the oil, you know, all of that stuff. Check all the parts out. But I got this idea. Everybody's probably saying, oh, God. So you see that? That handle? <laughs> You know, I don't need to get real fancy and put, uh, look at the mess, huh? Jeez, I gotta clean up my mess. That's what happens when you get busy, you know? Everything just kind of piles up on you. Anyway, so this is an actual uh, race brake, right? Handbrake. And I'm going to use this on a different project. Uh, I got another project that I'm doing that I'll get to uh, here as soon as I get my cart up and running. But uh, that's what it looks like, a, a regular race brake, right? Yeah. So I said, well, I need to put something on my cart, you know, because these Mancos, they work off the manual brakes. You know, they're okay, but sometimes they fail. So what I did was... <clears throat> show you so I got this brake set up and um, from Amazon it was like uh, I don't know 35 bucks I think something like that 30 to 35 and I said well I wonder if I can make this work well lo and behold I think it's a front brake system so I had to weld the bracket in there and it's pretty secure. The only problem is, if you look down here, right, this rod, when you push down on the pedal, it'd pull on this rod, right? So it's got to go that way in order to break. And I said, well, that's kind of bogus because I don't feel like buying another cable because the cable's like 20 bucks. I said, what can I do? So what I'm going to do is I'm drilling a hole right through here to the side of the up a bar here and I'm going to take that handle and I'm going to use it as an emergency <laughs> just in case the other ones don't work so that's what I'm going to do doing that I'm going to fix some of the welds down there in my cradle because you know things get loose things break you gotta do your maintenance right I gotta put some more side skirt on because I tore it up and just go over the whole cart itself, clean it up, check everything, check the valve lash, you know, all that stuff. That's what you got to do. When you cart, you know, if, if you get into carting, first off, you're going to end up with a mess like this. Or somebody's going to end up, um, you know, paying a lot of money to have somebody else fix it. So, everybody knows I've been doing this for years. So, the one thing that I can tell people that are first getting into carding, and a lot of people don't tell them, is it can get expensive. It really can. It's the luck of the draw. It really depends on how hard you drive it, you know, where you're driving it, how often you drive it. You know, there's certain things that you always have to do. So, usually after... Me riding about six hours, I changed the oil, okay? I check the oil before I start, and I check the oil when I finish. And the reason why is because if you see this filter right here, see how it looks gummed up? It is gummed up. It's called blow-by. And unless you get an oil catcher can system, which I have one, but I just haven't mounted it on this yet, you're going to get that blow-by. And blow-by... Well, that means it lowers the amount of oil uh, in your sump. So, you want to make sure that you always check your oil before and check your oil when you stop. And that means if you wrote it, you know, 30 minutes, check your oil. If you're hammering on this, you're going to get blow by. It just happens, you know, because there's a lot of pressure building up in there. So, always make sure that you check your oil absolutely that and your air cleaner now if you notice i got a shop towel with two um 
wrapped around my air cleaner with two zip ties. People say, well, what the heck did you do that for? Well, every motor is a little bit different in carburetors and your jetting and all of that. Okay, so there's, there's formulas for it. And I was messing around one day and I said, because I had a, a, a sock. And the sock went over the top of the, goes over the top of the air cleaner. And, um, well, it got ruined. And I said, well, I've got to put something over it. Because, you know, air cleaners, you know, they cost you 20 bucks. Well, 15 to 20 bucks, depending on where you buy it. So, I said, I wonder if I could wrap a shop towel. And you know what? I did, and it actually runs better with a shop towel. So, <coughs> it's just something for you to think about. Works for me, might not work for you. Uh, works good with this. I mean, this is a jetted carburetor, though. So, you know, bear that in mind. Um, yeah, it works great. So sometimes it's simple little things that you got laying around the house, you know, that cost a dollar versus paying, you know, $15 for a sock from some famous brand. So think outside the box. So keeping your air cleaner clean, keeping your car to car carburetor clean, you know, making sure your oil's checked, check your plug every so often. You know, I run NGK plugs. They seem to last longer. They run cleaner. Uh, I don't usually have a whole lot of problems with them. Uh, Bosch makes a good plug too. So those are the things you want to check. You want to check your axles. Uh, you want to make sure that you know your nuts and your bolts are clean. See this? Somebody hit a tree with it. Smacked a tree. One of my family members. And drove the wood up inside of there which eventually will eat at the beads so it's those types of things you know and you can't expect your family to do to speak up and tell you the truth you know or look over something because they're not used to carding they're not used to putting out hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do it you know and if they are then they'd be checking whatever they you know were riding another thing that you want to do is <clears throat> this is a torque converter setup, okay? So, periodically, what you want to do is take your torque converter out and clean it. There's videos on YouTube how to do that and clean it. The reason for that is, you know, grime and dirt and dust and everything else builds up in there. And eventually, you know, something catastrophic could happen or it just doesn't engage right. So, make sure that you take that apart. You know, check your front out every so often on these uh, Manco Dingoes. Um, the nylon washers that go down inside of these arms, they wear out and you get slop. You want to check them. You want to check your springs to make sure that your springs are not broken. Check your arms to make sure they're not bent. Uh, when they're bent, it changes the way that your uh, tires... Um, turn right so it ch changes your steering angle so you want to keep an eye on that check your pedals make sure that you know all your nuts are, are tight and everything that your springs are connected those are you know that's really important them springs do break i've had them break on me so you want to make sure you check the springs out another thing is is check your nuts on your front axle you know make sure they're tight uh, make sure that your barons are good because barons do blow out in these. Uh, check your nuts and bolts that you got that run around your car. Make sure they're tight. It's those little things like that that you check and you service all the time and you make sure that, you know, are not broke or loose. Uh, that will help you when you're carting. It's necessary. You have to do preventive maintenance checks and services. If you don't, your car will fail. It will blow up. If you don't watch the motor and keep the oil right in it, keep it clean, keep it fresh. These motors love their oil changed. You keep the oil changed, it'll last you a lot longer. Okay?
That's really important. People say, oh, well, what oil you use? Well, in the summertime, um, I usually run a heavier weight oil. I usually use a, a 2050 um, weight motor oil in these engines. In the wintertime, you can use 530 because it's a little colder and that keeps the temperature down. So um, it'll be right at the right viscosity for cold weather. Anything under like 40 degrees, that's what I usually run, 530. And then in the summertime, when it starts to get up there and get warm, I run 2050. Uh, I run 2050 Kendall to be uh, specific. So those are the things. Additive, you know, I use Berriman's. Uh, I use Berriman's in there. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, but Berriman's runs a, um, a fuel system cleaner. They have a fuel system cleaner that you can put in with your fuel mixture. And what I usually do is I take one can of Berriman's and I mix it to five gallons of gasoline. And uh, that way it's already pre-mixed and it helps to keep your carburetor clean and helps to cut down on cost. I do it all the time. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the description below. Take care. God bless. And have a wonderful day. This is Pastor Bob and I'm out of here. See ya. Oof, man, got a lot of work ahead of me today.